shatter the nose and. Okay, where's yeah, my last? Dead. Where's my last, last target here? In combat's not. I, that's what I'm wondering. Like you're still in combat. Although there's, oh, there's an open. Dead. There's an open door over here. That could be good. Hmm. All right. All right, dwarven axe guy. He's just charging. Yeah, because I was gonna say this is not like XCOM where it's only battle. Yeah, you know. yeah. Once once it's over, it'll go back to just roaming around. Yeah. Okay, I can open this door. Hello. Hello. Restless spirits of the dead. Hello. <laughs> I wonder if I can magically heal that magical damage she. Oh, it, oh wait, no, I'd actually have to, uh, I'd have to force cast the healing thing, and that would hurt her more, never mind. <laughs> uh. Interesting. Okay, oh yeah, okay. Send my little robot. Playing a rigger is really kind of cool, by the way, because you got these little... Oh, there's somebody! Yeah, there's more guys in the back. Oh, I see. Villainy uh. is still afoot. Well, they weren't really all that eager to uh, come help their friends. No, you'd think. Maybe the place is, like, really well soundproofed. Either that, or maybe they were really confident in their friend's ability. Yeah. Like, they hear the fighting stop, and they just assume that they won. It's their side one. Yeah. Or they're just on break. <laughs> Alright, now I'm going to see if I can magically heal that magical damage I inflicted on her. She, she inflicted on herself. It doesn't appear, uh, she doesn't appear to be a valid target, so no. I mean, well, it'd be kind of cheap if you could, like, you know... Do that to yourself and then just, you know, take it back with another spell. Yeah. Makes sense. So would she have to use like a mad kit or something? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and also magic healing in this game, it only heals your most recent injury. Right, right. So like if you've been pummeled a lot, then it doesn't fix all of it. Ah, speaking of med kits. There you go. Okay. Yep. Let me see if I'm remembering something correctly. Alright, just gonna. Everyone's. Oh, that's right, Finder can only move one. Might be a spirit summoning point around here somewhere. Nah, well, it doesn't matter if I can't see it. Okay. Alright, number five. So is opening a door a uh, free action? Uh, yeah. You can, if you can, if you can, like, run up to, you can open and, you can open a door. As long as you're by it, you can, it doesn't take anything to open it. Okay. That's good. Okay. And I'm going to give him this guy name, and I'm going to give him plus one armor. And from a, strictly speaking, from a tactical perspective, I really ought to wait and gather everyone at the door before I go crashing in. But... From an entertainment value perspective, I don't, I don't want to watch some guy meticulously getting everyone into place. So we're going to take the, we're going to just throw caution to the wind. And well, there's no one here. That was axe-wielding dwarves do not, you know, have patience. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, there is a spirit summoning majig. That's the technical term. Let's see, can she can she activate it? Yes. She, oh, let's see. Oh wait, no, no, she has to be closer. Damn. I love the spirit summoning in this hmm. game. Because I love the fact that they can like go out of control and they'll just start attacking anybody. Yeah. That's an interesting, uh, interesting mechanic. I would, uh, I'd love to get my hands on some of the pen and paper shadow run books. Just the, there's a relatively recent new edition, I think. Okay. Uh, fifth, fifth, maybe. I'm not certain. Hmm. It's, it's it's had a bit of a resurgence lately. They had a, they had like the new like book edition, and there's been this game, and there's that shadow run online thing. Yeah. Well, pen and paper doesn't really go away. Like, I'm actually really surprised by the, um... Oh! Continued enthusiasm. Dwarf guy took 24 oh. damage! Remember what we said about critical hits? Oh, yeah. Luckily... Oh, shit, is he gonna... Well, I got, I got, I got... He's... I got my healer lady right here. Or my mage lady. Right. And she can undo the massive damage. Yeah, that was all in one giant whack, so he got 24 hits back. 24 damage undone. I do find that interesting, that, uh... Death of a Thousand Cuts is more of an efficient way yeah. in this magic universe. Well, I think part I think part of it is that in, you know, Shadowrun, like, there are... Uh, it's not like you have, like, MP, or it's, and it's not, or it's not like, say, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, where you have a certain number of uses per day. Like, yeah. the time to rest between covering, casting heal and then casting it again isn't that long, so I think it was probably to to, so to prevent players from just, you know, stand around for 20 minutes, you know, heal a couple times, and then, you know, like, it's like the battle never happened or whatever. Right. Force is more consequential. I like it. Yeah. All it's right. definitely more tactical. Okay. So is that another adept right there? Yeah, it's got, yeah. it's like a small... Oh, I'm gonna do that double strike again. All right, I didn't even need it, but very nice. Excellent. All right, Johnny Five, you can take the brunt of that shotgun guy's attack. Oh no! Ow! Oof! Ow! That was a long way. Oh, and I took the I took Dang. the AP damage too, which means I since I only have one AP because I'm busy controlling Johnny Five Flandry can't do anything else this turn. <laughs> ah, you like grenades, eh? Ah, damn, they both nice. Guy said, the guy said something. I didn't catch what it was. Uh, me neither. Speaking of area of effect attacks, try to hit, try. To... Oh, those both got critical. So nice. Luck is starting to turn. Five. Show no mercy. Ow! You had one job, number five. <laughs> oh, I got shotgunned again! At really long range. Oh. I'm Flandry's pretty busted up at this point. Uh, no spear med gets left? No, I have so I, I I have plenty, I just they're scared they're you know limited resource. Right. Let's see. All right. I'm gonna, sum I'm gonna summon whatever the hell that is. Pestilence. That that sounds promising. Oof. Acid stream. Who does continue? Oh. 
Bad luck with these guys. More aim for our our diminutive bloodthirsty friend here. <laughs> and you'll Flandry. Okay, I can fix six on him. Alrighty. I'm just gonna chill back here for a while, I think. <laughs> yeah! Twenty damage. Nice. Yeah, what nice. the hell? I'll move up. Okay. He's on the run. And again, if I had a giant thing named Pestilence after me, I'd be running too. Remember, you can feed, you can give it more action points, but it increases the risk of it of it go, of it escaping, and going nuts. Right. Now, if it goes nuts, it doesn't necessarily attack you at all; just attack whatever's you know. Oh. Nice. Got him. All right. And we are victorious. Very nice. Let's see what this guy's dropped. Ares Flight Recorder. Optional. Find the pay data the runners are after. Oh yeah, that's right, there was some other... Like, corporate espionage info that somebody wanted... That we can make some money off of. Hmm. Okay. Okay, now I can talk to Shannon. I'll now summon the spirit. Whoa. It's gotta be kind of awkward summoning the spirits of the dead in a room where you just killed a bunch of people. <laughs> I'm sure. Whoa. Oof. The air grows cold, and the spirits of dead children coalesce from the vapor of your breath. Their cherubic faces are burned, and their lips quiver as if they are about to cry. But their eyes are round and vacant, and they glare at you now, unblinking. We are the innocent who have perished in the flames, choking on smoke as we fell from the sky, crying for our mothers. Remember, this is the, they keep the wrecks of airplanes here. Right. You bring anchors to your world, which was once home to us, and we will use them to testify. Show the first magical fetish to the spirits. You no longer see the world of flesh, Seeker. Only the essence and auras of living things. Words, though. Words may echo through the veil, and sometimes... Sometimes we may hear them. Last night, the place was filled with a scream that went on and on, drawing us to it. It was a man, crying out for a witness as he died. And so we came to bear witness, but fled in terror before the malevolent spirit that profaned the man's remains. The spirit was Other, capital O. It was not of this place. It had twisted its way through the veil and through the dark to come here. Show the next finish. When the other had gone and we returned to our vigil, we found two creatures of flesh. One you would call an elf, unsullied by technology and able to channel the energies of the cosmos. Yet his spirit, yet his spirit was corrupted from within. He was dark and twisted, yet not like the other, so he did not flee. The second we knew to be a troll. Ribbons of his essence had been flayed from him, leaving cold machinery behind. His aura was the aura of one simple and confused. Between elf and troll lay the remains of the man whose sister now chants to us for justice. Hmm. Interesting. The elf, his essence remains in this place, where the man died. Something has been left behind. A small part of him, perhaps. 
show the third magic glove fetish. Through us, you shall bear witness and hear the words of the elfin troll. Prepare yourself. Oh, we're going to the closed circuit security camera footage now. <laughs> 